Welcome to Excel Magic Tricks number 636. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Tricks 636 to 639. Wow, we got a great dynamic chart video here. We have some data points, and we want to build a frequency table and a histogram. But everything has to be dynamic. So right now, you can see we have our categories, and the categories on this are an increment of 1. And then we have our formula over counting, counting frequency. How many times does the number 4 occur in this data set? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then over here, we have our chart. But ah, watch this. If I type minus 1 here, I want the categories to automatically change from minus 1 to the max, incrementing by 1, have all the frequencies update, and have our chart update. If I type in a bigger number here, 15, I can see that everything updates. I type in another minus 1, enter minus 1, and that should be working there dynamically. Everything dynamic. Let's go over and see how to do this from scratch. First, we're going to have to define a dynamic range for this. So as we add new data points below, our formulas will all update. Let's go ahead and build this. Uh, in a cell here, and then we will, since we want a dynamic range, we're going to use defined names. We're going to use it, use it, uh, we're going to define the name using a formula, and that formula will define a dynamic range. I'm going to click in this cell right here, C5, and I'm going to start the formula by clicking in this cell. Now, the dynamic range will always start there. I'm going to type a colon, backspace, backspace. Now, we need uh, um, some cell reference here. Right now it would be A11, but if we have data down to A13, it needs to be A13. Well, the index function can actually look up a cell reference. Now, normally we use the index to look up a value, but if you put the index in the context of a range, meaning cell reference, colon, and then the index, index no longer searches for a value, it searches for uh, a cell reference like A11. We'll st I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Now I need to lock this because this is eventually going to be a defined name. The array. We are looking up a cell reference and this data set is never going to have more than 100 records. So I'm going to um, highlight down to 101 and then hit the F4 key. So right now it's saying, hey index, look up here and find, well right now we need A A11. So comma, what is the row number? Well. Right now we have, and for this entire data set, we only have numbers. And there's never going to be any blanks or other types of data, just numbers. So we can simply, for the row number, use count and highlight that same range again. Right now it will look at that range and count counts numbers, so it will count exactly 10 numbers. So that's perfect because this range starts from A2 down to there, so right now index will look through this, count down 10, and that's the row number that it will select. So right now, um, it'll find that value or that cell reference. Now watch this. Index right now, by the way, we can see that this is uh, 10 if we highlight, if we highlight the, and hit F9, right, Control Z. But now watch this. Here's what the index normally does when it's not in the context of a cell reference. Now right now, because I'm highlighting just this one, I hit the F9, you can see index does what it's supposed to. It retrieves a, the value in the cell, Control Z. But no way, if I highlight this whole thing now, it's going to function totally differently. It's going to get that cell reference. Now when I hit F9, it just delivers all the values. If you ran Formula Evaluator, you could explicitly see that that index is delivering the cell reference A11. Now I'm going to copy this, because we need to put this up in define names, Control C, and I'm going to enter it into the cell, Control Shift Enter. Now I, just in case there's trouble, at least I have a record of it right there and I can come back to it later. Control F3 opens Name Manager, Control F3, I'm going to say New. The name is going to be data. I'm going to come down here and highlight this, delete it, and control V. Click OK. I'm going to click the collapse button right here to check. And sure enough, looks like it's working. Uncollapse it. Click close. 
Now let's uh, come up here and let's uh, use our dynamic range. We need the min for um, our calculations over here. I'm going to type the word D. Notice the dog tag means name. I'm going to hit tab and enter. Equals max D tab enter. And then finally, we need uh, the difference between these to figure out how many categories. So the max minus the min. Now, this isn't going to work because that is, we need one more because we want to include that. So we're always going to add one because we need to go 12. And then the difference between there is counting all the way. Meaning, if we did this, we would either exclude the 2 or the 12. We add one more and we get all the categories we want. Now, over to our category formula. Remember, we need this formula. If it's the min is 2, it has to start at 2. If I type a minus 1 here, it needs to start at minus 1. So I'm going to, and a second requirement is we only needed 11 categories right now, but we need to somehow dynamically be able to jump up to 14 and show a blank everything below a 14. So I'm going to do my formula equals if and our, we need a number incrementer inside our formula. So we're going to use the rows function, f2, f dollar sign 2 to lock it on the row, colon f2. Now right now it's rows from 2 to 2 is 1, but when we copy it down, this is locked, this is not. So it will increment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Anytime that number incrementer is greater than this one, and I'm going to hit the F4. If it's greater than, means we got past row 11, what do we want? Logical test, comma, what do we want? Value of true, double quote. Comma, the value if false. This is going to be our um, series of categories. Now, we always need it to start at the min, so I'm going to go like this and hit the F4 uh, key to lock it going down across the rows. And I'm going to add, because remember, this needs to be 2 and then 1, or minus 1, 0, 1, depending on what the starting point is. So I'm going to add the same rows. Now this won't work, because what's 2 plus uh, 1? It's 3, and we need to start at 2, so we subtract 1, and that'll work perfectly. Close parentheses, Control Enter. And I'm going to drag it all the way down to 101. Now let's go ahead and test it, minus 1. That, um, you notice our data, our data range that's dynamic is updating because it gets the minus 1. Looks like it started at minus 1, 0, 1, incrementing by 1 all the way to the max, so that's all working fine. Now our formula for frequency, we just have to do count if, right? Count how many 2's there are, count how many 4's there are. But we also need this formula to turn off when it gets past uh, the 11th row. But actually, we don't need to use our 11 here. We can just say equals if this cell right here, 1 to my left, equals blank. Because all of these below are blank. When that is true, what do we want to show? The value if true is double quote for blank, comma. Otherwise, we want to do our count if. And the range is our data, d tab comma, and our criteria is one cell to the left relative cell reference. Close parentheses, close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down because we have something to the left. Now let's test it. Uh, minus 1, enter. OK, looks looks fine, 0, 0, 1. And let's try, try a 15. So we get uh, our max, our min, and the total range between these, right? Because that's, uh, and sure enough, we have a 15, a bunch of zeros. Looks like it's working fine. Now, we have to do our chart. And I'm just going to start off. We'll make the chart. And then we have to create our dynamic ranges in the cells, paste them into the name, and then insert those names into the chart. I'm going to highlight this right here. Actually, we do not need two number categories. These are going to be on the horizontal axis, and they're not, they, they are labels. If we highlight both of these, the, the chart wizard will interpret them as a data point and make a column, but we don't want that. So we're just highlighting one. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt F1, Alt F1. That's for the default chart. All I did was insert a column chart. Now I'm going to make it pretty small here so we can see what we're doing. Get rid of that. 
I'm going to get rid of that for now. I absolutely, when the finished product is done, I want a, a chart label. I'm also going to do some formatting right off the bat. None, none of this, uh, th this isn't right, but when we'll fix it later. I want to format these, so I'm going to highlight the columns. Control-1 is the keyboard shortcut for format uh, cells or format chart elements. Gap width, 0. This is a histogram, so I want to show gap width of 0. It just means there's no space between these categories. And then we want to come over here, fill. I want to say vary colors by point. I love that. You can already see it's looking a lot better. I want to do border color, solid line, maybe black. You can do whatever you want there. Now I want to do something uh, again. I want to, Now I want to add right above each column the actual frequency. So I'm going to go to, sorry, layout. I have my screen really small so it fits on here. But you go to the labels group and then data labels. And down at the bottom off the screen it says outside end. This is inside. Right below it is outside end. Now wait a second. I do not want those zeros to show. So I'm going to click once to highlight all the data labels. And I'm going to apply a custom number format. Control 1. Come down to number. Um, down to custom. And I've already uh, created it here. But what it means is the first semicolons define the quadrants. The first semicolon, before the first semicolon is how do you format a positive number. That just means a single digit. Then the next quadrant is negative. We're now going to have negative, so but I put it as blank. And then finally, the third quadrant is how do you format zeros. And I'm just going to leave it blank. And sure enough, it will leave any zero it encounters blank. So click, uh, click close. And sure enough, that works just fine, because those zeros were annoying. Now, we have our chart. We might want to do some more formatting. I'm going to s f we might want to do some more formatting later, but right now we just want to create our dynamic ranges. Uh, let's do our same trick as before. I'm going to click here, colon, backspace, backspace, and index. Now, similar to what we did over here, we're only going to the maximum possible categories we could ever have. Um, We actually could have a lot more categories than uh, we have data points. Um, and I don't know what the range is. So I'm going to highlight uh, all the way down to, if we knew our range, I didn't, if we knew our range, we could be more exact about this. But I'm just going to highlight down to 101. Whatever the range for your data set is, you'd have to include a big enough range here so that your formula, and also copy your formula down. Nevertheless, the, our array. That is our lookup value, because we need to find the last cell reference. Right now, we need cell reference F12, right? So that's the array to look up. And finally, what's the row number? Now, if we start it here, F2, and go down, we can actually just use the range, because it will always tell us how many rows to go down. So I'm going to hit the F4 key. That's it, close parentheses. I'm going to hi oops, F4 that. I'm going to highlight this and hit the F9 key. Sure enough, it looks like it got it right. Control Z. I'm going to copy. Control Shift Enter. Now this is for our categories. I'm going to go up right now. Control F3. Add a new name. Hopefully I spelled that right. Categories. I'm going to come down here and Control V. Click OK. I'm going to immediately click the Collapse to see if it's working. Categories are working fine. Those are the categories on the horizontal axis. All right, I'm going to click Close. Now let's do our next one. Equals. Actually, watch this. We can cheat. I'm just going to highlight this. Control C. Escape. Put it in Edit Mode. Control V. Now I'm going to grab this blue cell reference because that's not the right starting point, And I'm going to grab this. That's not the right range either. There it is. If I highlight this and hit the F9 key, we should get exactly what we have there. Control Z. Con I'm going to copy this whole thing. Control C. Control Shift Enter just to leave them here in case we run into trouble. Now we need to do frequency. Control F3. New. Hopefully I spelled it right. 
and then highlight down here, Control V, click OK. Click Collapse, it looks like it's working. Click Close. Now, let's see how to do this. Now, the inserting dynamic name ranges into charts sometimes gets a little tricky, but let's see if we can um, do it. Design, and we need to go and edit our ranges. Click on Frequency and click Edit. Now, the trick here is you need to leave that sheet reference in and highlight just the range right there. Now these are the values, so I'm going to uh, hit the F3 key because I need to insert the frequency here. So I'm going to hit F3, the f dynamic range, and I'll double click that. Now an interesting thing is going to happen. Notice we, we left the sheet reference there. Um, the name is there, but when I click OK, if I come back and look at this and hit Edit, what it does is it actually automatically puts the workbook name in. and the frequency defined name has sheet references and then the formula in it. All right, click OK. Let's click OK. Oops, I didn't mean to click OK. Design, select data. We need to come over here and edit this. And now here, we also need to have our sheet reference. Now, I'm not going to, I don't know the syntax, or I'm going to pretend I don't know the syntax. I'm just going to click here. Totally wrong, but look, I got the syntax. Now I can just come over here and delete this, or highlight the cell reference, hit F3, and do our categories. Right? Same thing, we have to, we have our, uh, sheet reference um, syntax, our name, click OK. When you edit this, you'll see that it does the same thing. Click OK. Click OK. Sure enough, now it looks like it is working. Let's try this. Let's go ahead and type minus 1. Sure enough, it got minus 1 all the way to 12. Let's type a 15. It got the 15, and notice this is expanding also, of course, because that's linked to the chart. I'm going to type some uh, data. How about uh, 3, enter 3, enter 2, enter 3, enter 5, enter uh, minus 1, enter. And sure enough, our as dynamic, every time we dump data here or uh, delete it, this thing will totally update. If I were to control shift down arrow, I don't have a data set. You delete this, it shows zero for a while, but if then if you dump your next data set in here, it just totally updates. So that is a dynamic frequency table, a dynamic uh, histogram with increments of one. We'll see you next trick.